In example 10, if we throw a ball from an initial height vertically upward or downward with some initial velocity on some planetary body, we want to find the ball's position functions both in imperial and metric at any time after throwing. Start with the fact that acceleration due to the gravity is constant. So just going to keep gravity gravity for the moment since I can do it that way generally. So it's in both imperial and metric. We can figure out what the numbers are for those as needed. So if I just toss something that's not going to accelerate itself, its only acceleration force is going to be gravity. So g is just the gravitational constant. So we're going to call it g. It's not a, um, a variable. It's a number. It's a no number for this planet. There, It's negative 32 feet per second per second or negative 9.8 meters per second squared as well. So if that's my gravity, that's my acceleration function, I know that the velocity function is going to be the integral of the acceleration function, and hence the integral of g dt. But g is just a constant, so it's going to integrate to gt plus c. Okay, now another way to phrase c, c because if I plug zero in for t, this is going to become zero. So whatever I get for c gets the y-intercept or the initial condition for my velocity function. So we're just going to fill that in with v naught. It is our initial velocity. So we would usually rewrite this as v of t equals gt plus v naught. Okay, so we've got some equations for acceleration due to gravity, and then if the only acceleration is due to gravity, then its velocity must be gt plus v naught. Then I can also talk about its position. So its position, that's supposed to be an s. <laughs> it looks a little like an integral symbol. Uh, and s position is the integral of velocity dt, and so that's the integral of g t squared plus v naught dt. And so the integral of g t squared, g is a constant, constant multiple. So we've got g times, sorry, I accidentally already partially integrated that. The square isn't there yet, my bad. It's just dt. I was trying to copy this line down, didn't do a good job. Now I'm going to integrate it. I'm going to add one to that power and get a 2. So now I've got my g t squared over 2. So I only halfway integrated it on accident there because I didn't put the over 2. Then plus v naught's a constant, so when I integrate it, it's v naught t plus nu c. Once again, when I plug zero in to s of t, then these are both going to zero out, and so what I'm going to get right here is the initial position. So we're going to call that s naught. All right, and so if I rewrite this, make my s a little more s-like. So s of t, usually we, instead of writing as a, that g over t squared, we just call it one half g. t squared plus v naught t plus s naught. And we have our position of a falling body function. Okay. And uh, so these are just general formula. So a, you can call it a naught if it's not gravity, but we're just putting g for gravity right here. You could rewrite these, and I'm going to rewrite them in general, just replacing g with a naught, same thing. But a naught, again, those are the two gravitational constants on Earth in both empirical and metric. So these are both gravity. And so if I rewrite these, um, my acceleration in terms of a naught, my velocity would be a naught t plus v naught, and then one half my position one half a naught t squared plus v naught t plus s naught now we actually used these formulas for falling bodies back in derivatives we just said hey you know what use this formula and notice that its derivative is this and its derivative is this now we actually see even more where they came from they come from the only acceleration force on these objects being gravity and so if you integrate up that's the only possible position function for the object that can change if the object is self-propelled and has some other acceleration force, but if it's only gravity, then it's going to be propelled in this way, based on that relationship. So, uh, if we already know some things about the situation, we can actually use this technique to make predictions about what will happen. So let's presume when we throw a ball from a height of 6 feet in an upward direction at a speed of 132 feet per second. Okay, average of a fastball. 
on Earth, and we're going to ignore air resistance. So I've got to do that, because physics makes things difficult. <laughs> I'll ignore some air resistance. So find functions for velocity and position of the ball using calculus. Okay, so I actually, for part A, uh, first want to declare my acceleration function, even though they really asked me for velocity, because I need to know the gravitational constant. Notice that we're measuring things in feet, and so we're going to use the negative 32 feet per second per second for um, our acceleration function. Then my velocity function will be the integral of our negative 32 dt, and so that is negative 32 t plus v naught. Now, they told me v naught because they told me that I threw this upward with a speed of 132. So that's the initial, that's 0, 132, or they're declaring for me that v naught is 132. Make sure you note that we're throwing it upward, so our velocity is positive. If we threw it downward, we'd have a negative. So I know the value for v naught right here, it is a positive 132. So that allows me to finish the velocity function with its initial condition. So the velocity function is negative 32t plus 132. Okay, so that was step one. Find the velocity, and then step two of part A is going to be find the position function. I know that the position function is the antiderivative of the velocity function. So it's the antiderivative of negative 32t plus 132 dt. So negative 32t squared divided by 2 plus 132t plus c. I know that this c is my s naught, my initial height, and I'm told that I threw it from a height of 6 feet, so that is s naught. And so I know that I have plus 6. Again, your height could be above ground and below ground, but we're throwing it from a height of 6 feet, so it's going to be a positive 6. And so now I can use that initial condition to finalize my s of t function. Negative 32 divided by 2 is negative 16. t squared plus 132t plus 6. Okay, and so now we have the velocity and position functions that they asked us for in part A. In part B, they want us to know, or they want to know how high the ball will travel and then at what speed does it hit the ground. So I'm going to grab some calculator action to finish answering these questions. So I got the parabola, so I can graph it. I'm going to get, I'm just going to do new graphs so I don't have to mess with my pi scale there. Okay, so new little bitty graph here, but we, are, we can just call s of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 132t plus 6. And then I'm going to change my scaling uh, by a lot to be able to see the top here. Uh, looks like I, on the picture that was in notes, we're going to be bigger than 200, so let's go for a y max of 300 up here. That's pretty good, all right. And so, how high did it go? It went 278 feet up in 4.125 seconds. Okay, so we just found the vertex. So if I just label this point up here, it was 4.125 comma. 278.25 and so my answer for part b is the ball is it a ball yes okay so the ball traveled uh 278.25 feet up highest a little awkward phrasing there I just want to make sure i know that that's the highest it's going to travel in how long? 4.125 seconds. All right, and then C, how, uh, at what speed will the ball hit the ground? So the first thing I want to know is when it hits the ground. Okay, so it hits the ground after, I'm going to label on my graph, after 8.295 seconds. So over here, 8.295 comma 0 
Now that's just the ordered pair for where I hit the ground, but that gives me the time, and so if I wanted how fast, we're going to plug it into our velocity function. So v of 8.295 is, remember that v is the derivative of s, so if I type s prime of 8.295, 295, it'll evaluate it for me and give me negative 133.44. And then I'm going to throw some units on this when I explain. The other thing to notice when they're asking me what speed, remember that speed is the absolute value of velocity. So this is the velocity, speed is its absolute value. So we are going to take the absolute value of this to get its speed. They didn't ask me for the velocity, they asked me for the speed. It is the absolute value of velocity. So the speed was 133.44 feet per second when I hit the ground.